Hello everyone, so in this video I'm super happy to present you the completely new um, dialogue module for RPG Builder. As you can see it is using a graph system, so graph and node, so it's very easy to create new nodes, connect them to each other, um, and so on. So you can create some very complex dialogue trees and you can of course have much bigger trees than that. But um, in this video, this is going to do just fine because it's already showing quite a few very cool features. So this system is going to be in RPG Builder version 1.0.4, which I'm actually submitting to the asset store today. So you can expect this update in the next few days. Now, um, before going in game and showing you the UI and everything like how things interact and how things works, I'm actually going to be showing you um, some of the, you know, key features and things that are really, really going to make this dialogue system amazing for you because um, this part is mostly the RPG builder part. So what you see right here is pretty standard for a dialogue system. You have nodes, uh, some nodes are for the NPC, some nodes are for the player, etc. But of course, you know me, I had to add the RPG builder touch to it, right? So if I click on advanced option here, or maybe create a new one, um, a new node here. So we start from zero. Yep. Um, you see that uh, if you click advanced option here, we have a new window opening. So this window is actually allowing us to um, attach or define quite a lot more options and things to this specific node, not just a message, right? So this could be, for example, hey, um, I am a mage. So if, for example, this player answer will be, hey, I am a mage. And this, for example, you could decide to be only visible in certain conditions. So each of those nodes that you can see here can have their own requirements to be available uh, to your players. Those requirements, of course, are dynamic. So for example, in the case of a uh, requirement item owned, let's say potion. So in this case, um, this, you know, this, um, dialogue answer for the player or option would only be available and visible in the UI if the uh, player currently owned five minor healing, minor healing potions. Now, if you remove this and instead make it, for example, class, and in this case, sorcerer, well, let's change it from uh, mage to sorcerer. This um, answer here would only be visible if the current class is sorcerer, right? So uh, you can, of course, have as many of those requirements as you want, and they all need to be met for this answer to be available. So the requirement list is uh, pretty much the standard um, RPG builder requirement list that you can find in quests, talent trees, and things like that, with two new options. Uh, which also have been added to every other module. And in this case, it's dialogue line completed and dialogue line not completed. And I'm actually going to come back to this in a bit. So uh, that's it for requirement. Very useful. You can, um, that's how, you know, you decide what answer is available and when. So you can really make some interesting dialogue and you can make some engaging experience in your games because not all NPC or not all characters will have the same interaction based on your current characters, his items. As you can see, the list is pretty detailed. So for example, it could require you to have killed a specific boss uh, one time or a specific mob 500 times to be visible, you know? So it's really in depth. Um, yeah, pretty much like RPG Builder in general. You can require an ability to be known, ability to be unknown, crafting recipe, uh, all these kind of things. So I'm going to let you have fun with that and not go in detail too much about each of those. Uh, and you can, of course, collapse each category in the case you have a lot of elements, uh, so your UI is not like too um, messy. Now, very, very cool part also, uh, probably my favorite one. Now we also have the option to have some game actions. So game actions are very, very um, in-depth. Uh, as you can see, the list is quite big also. And whatever game action you attach to um, a player answer, for example, is going to be triggered whenever this uh, player clicks this answer, right? So for example, if we will click the, hey, I am a sorcerer, um, answer in the dialogue interaction, every single game action, because of course you can have as many as you want, will be triggered and applied. So uh, we have the full list here and I'm going to go over it very quickly. So this allows you to use an ability to apply an effect. In the case of an effect, you can choose if the effect should be applied on the NPC or yourself, which is in this case a target. We can have um, gaining items. So you can give yourself some items, some potions, some whatever you want, account, and also something as you can see, each uh, game action has its own chance uh, slider. So from zero to 100, and 100 means that this is going to be happening every time. 
but for example you could have only a 50 percent chance to get one potion from this node or whatever right um you can lose item you can learn ability learn recipes learn resource node bonuses learn skills talent trees you can gain three points so talent trees point you can lose talent tree point you can gain experience so for your character you can gain skill experience Weapon template experience, which is also a new system coming in 1.0.4. You can gain a character level directly, a skill level. You can have a quest proposed to you. You can have, uh, you can gain currency, lose currency. You can spawn a game object. In this case, for example, you could have assigned a prefab here and a position to be spawned in the world. You can destroy a game object. Here you will simply write the name. You can activate a game object. You can deactivate game object. You can uh, gain faction points, lose faction points, play a sound here. You can teleport somewhere. In this case, you can decide, for example, to teleport to a completely new game scene, so an instance uh, and a position. Or, for example, you could also uh, teleport in a position within this scene, right? Um, so that's for teleport. You can decide to save the character data. And, for example, you will go in RPG Builder Editor um, General and you can completely disable uh, auto save. And you would, in this case, still be able to save by talking to an NPC, for example. Uh, you can remove an effect. So for example, you could have a potion effect on your character and this NPC would be able to remove it or whatever. You can play an animation and you can complete a dialogue line. And remember that you can have as many of the sections as possible. So for example, you could, um, I don't know, gain an item as well as playing um, an animation and saving your character data at the same time. So yeah, that's really, really cool. A uh, lot of things you can do from your dialogues now and from your NPC in the world. I think it can make the world really interactive. Um, and I'm sure um, uh, a lot of you are going to be very imaginative and creative with that and do some super, super cool stuff in game. So that's pretty much it for the game, uh, game actions. And now when we go to the show settings, so here we have a few more settings. Um, here, for example, we have two toggle box. So the first one is about is uh, if this um, player answer being possible or able to be viewed endlessly. What I mean by this is should you be able to view or rather to have this answer available to you every single time you uh, engage in this dialogue. Uh, if you want to, then you leave this on. If you don't want to, then you can choose how many times it should be visible. If it's one time, then of course, um, it will be visible one time, five times, whatever number you assign here um, is going to be uh, uh, the maximum. So every time you're going to view this thing, it's going to be uh, saving on your character data and it's going to add by one the amount of time you view it. And as long as it's smaller than the max time, it's going to be visible. Now you have the same thing, but for the click um, time. So instead of just viewing it, you can also limit the amount of times you can click it. And this is very useful. Um, now, on top of this, of course, we have requirements, and that's where I'm going to talk about uh, dialogue lines in a bit. But I just want to show this last setting first. Here, for example, if we go to this one, I think this one has one. Yeah, so here we have an image field. So you can drag and drop your texture, your drawings, your whatever. Um, and this is going to show on the side of the UI when you hover this answer. So I'm going to show you this in a bit. Um, and uh, here, for example, the NPC also has that. And as you can see, this is for each node. So each node can have its own. And what this means is that you could use that. I know some games do this. Uh, for example, to have different drawings of uh, your NPC with different face expression, you know, or like actions or whatever. So for example, you could start happy and then you tell him I don't like you or whatever. And then this NPC node is now um, an image of him, you know, not happy or crying or whatever, right? So this is very cool, a side feature that was actually uh, requested by the community and I thought it would be cool to add it. Anyway, here, um, concerning dialogue lines. So dialogue lines is pretty much a way for you to uh, have your player go through a specific dialogue branch or line only one time. And here, for example, I'm going to show this in game in a bit, but uh, here we have a branch which says, um, so hello there player, and you answer to him, hey, do you know about the wolf axe? And the NPC tells you, yes, if you bring it to me, I will reward you. And then um, this thing here, first of all here, if we click on more option, you see that this node, so this answer to be visible to you, requires the dialogue line to not be completed. And this is with this ID here. And this ID is actually this one, right? 
Um, and so if this is completed, you will never see this possibility to answer that again. So what happened is that when you have it, so this, for example, to be visible is only going to, this answer is only going to be visible when the wolf axe item is at least one time in your bag. Um, if it's not, then it's going to show only, Hey, if you bring it to me, I will reward it to you. Now, what happens when you, when you have, I have it. So you finally have the axe, etc. Now you have a lot of game action happening. So, uh, that's going to be cool to see in game. But for example, we have the apply effect gain experience, etc. But what matters here is, uh, one of the game action type, as you could see before is complete di um, dialogue line. And in this case, you attach the uh, ID of whatever um, node you want to be completed. And in this case, we just simply attach this one. And uh, so when you click, I have it, now this one is going to be completed. And if we click on advanced option here, you see that this one cannot be completed to be visible. So um, yeah, in this case, it's not going to be visible anymore after you got those reward one time. It's going to be uh, making a little more sense in game. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go in game actually and uh, go back and forth with um, uh, the graph and you know make like a parallel of what's happening in game and how it's set up in the graph. So let's make a new uh, character. So we start with your quest and stuff. Um, here we have the uh, dialogue NPC and uh, I'm going to go to screen, I think. So here we talk to him and we have um, indeed the, well, actually, I'm not sure about full screen. So uh, I want to be able to see the, the graph at the same time, right? Uh, don't worry about this. This is just like editor errors. Uh, so here uh, we have the hello there player name, of course. So hello there THMSV. Uh, just quickly about those keywords, you can go to settings, uh, general dialogue settings, and here you can add your own keywords. So in this case, player level, it's going to return the uh, level of the player, player name, and so on. So here we have hi, which is uh, the first node here. We have, do you know about the wolf axe? We have, you can only click this answer once. You can only view this answer three times. And can you destroy this cube, please? Hey, I am a sorcerer. By the way, uh, I forgot that this node was still in actually. Um, I wanted to remove it initially, but as you can see, uh, this one doesn't have any requirement, so that's why it's visible. But let's make, uh, let, I'm gonna show you how uh, easy it is to change. So let's say that this should actually be only visible if we're a, a warrior. I can quickly close that, close this dialogue. And here you see that um, we don't see this, hey, I'm a sorcerer anymore. Of course, it doesn't make sense because I assigned the warrior class here, but you get the idea. Anyway, here we still see this, you can view this uh, answer three times only. So if I close it, we can steal it one time, but now this time we will not be able to see it anymore because we already saw this answer three times. Now, for example, we could ask him, hey, can you destroy this cube here? And he will do that. And now you see that we don't have the option to uh, destroy the cube anymore. Why? Because here we have the, can you destroy this cube, please not. And if we click to advanced options, it requires um, this pretty much node to not be completed. But when we click it, it's completing itself, right? It's also destroying the uh, cube, but it's completing itself. So uh, we do it one time and it's not going to be available anymore to us. So now what else do we have to us? We have high. In this case, you see that when I over high, it is showing the image here. So um, if I go back to high, up, we see the image here that it's supposed to show. So this is cool. Uh, it's not applied to all nodes for now. I just wanted to show it here. So we can click that. How are you? And here we have two options. We have great uh, 1.4, 1.0.4 uh, is coming. So this is how are you from the ZMC. Great 1.0.4 is coming soon. This is a full interaction. And when you click this, the dialogue is going to close because it's the last interaction from the dialogue, right? And as you can see, this one is not limited. We can do it as many times as you want. You also notice that here we have a goodbye uh, answer here, but this is not in the uh, dialogue graph, right? Uh, so that's another feature that you can see in the RPG Builder in the dialogue module, which we actually see for the first time in this video. So it's under word and dialogues. And here you see, you can attach your graph. So for example, if you double click this, if I close that, if you double click this, it's going to open the graph directly. And then you can, of course, you know, uh, attach it to um, here like we did before. But before that, uh, I mean, below that, you see that we have some extra settings. So we have exit nodes. 
exit node if this is on you can choose to always have one node by default no matter the current options because in some cases when you completed all the dialog lines for example uh it's possible that no answer are available anymore and it will not look great right so um in this case we can choose to have a node with the message goodbye showed you can of course choose whatever message you want here and that's what's happening here so um here in this case we have also the option to say goodbye instead of you know keeping talking so we are done with this first one um, but as you can see, I just wanted to show here, you see the node is once again a different image. So it's really every time you have an NPC message or something like this, this image can be different. So I think it's pretty cool. Now, uh, do you know about the wolf axe? Yes, if you bring it to me, I will reward you. And now here you see that we don't have the option to say I have it because, well, we don't have it. So it's not in our bag. All we have right now is a magic flower. So we can say goodbye. I'm going to give it uh, to myself, of course, because it's going to be easier. So now you see that we have the wolf axe um, in our bag. And if I talk to the NPC again, hey, do you know about the wolf axe? Yes, I have it. So now, for example, uh, we're going to receive a bunch of um, experience, uh, reputation. You, you see that we got some gold, we got some new levels, and he also applied a uh, buff on us, actually, that you can see bottom uh, left here. And now we can say, hey, great job. Here is something for you. And goodbye. Now, if we talk to him again, we can't talk about the wolf axe again because the wolf axe, like we saw before, requires for the dialogue line to not be completed. But this um, node here completed it. So it's not going to be visible for characters ever again. Now, um, this one is the last one I wanted to show for um, this video. You can only click this answer once. So you click this, the dialogue is over because there is nothing um, after, no other node, right? Um, but now if we look at it, we can't click on it anymore because it's said to be um, not, you know, clicked, clickable like endlessly and you can click it only one time. So that's it. And now um, if we talk to the NPC, we only have this one, which is repeatable as many times as you want. And we have the exit node, uh, goodbye. So that's pretty much it. Um, now to show you how flexible it is and how, as always, you know, uh, RPG Builder is very, very um, easy to use and you can iterate pretty much most of the thing at runtime, etc. You can say, hey, I am a new node. And just to have fun, we could add some game actions. So um, let's say game item. Let's give ourselves some potions. 15. And maybe also let's try a game item. Uh, beast blood. Uh, one and maybe with only like 25% chance so uh, we make use of the chance option and what else could we do um, I'm not sure I was going to play sound but I'm actually not currently recording the sound of my computer um, but I don't know we could for example apply a healing effect so um, placing healing on the target so in this case ourselves or we could apply it on the NPC also and that's it. So you can uh, close that. By the way, you see that that's something I forgot to mention at the beginning, but this graph extra do not need to be saved like in the editor, it's instantly saved. So now if we talk to him, hey, I am a new node. I'm gonna open my bag now. And we got lucky because we also got the beast blood. Now we also got some uh, potions that we can use. And as you can see, um, we uh, got a healing so when i click it we see the plus 50 green here it's actually the healing effect so yeah that's pretty much it and um yeah that's pretty much all i wanted to show for this video this one of course does not have any requirement so it's going to be visible as many times as we interact with it so that's pretty much it now when it comes to the ui obviously you can completely modify it make it pretty um i'm not really good with ui i'm just here to make it working perfectly for you and uh, making it pretty is your job right so yeah you will take care of that but uh yeah that's a full-fledged dialogue system for rpg builder with a lot of cool options as you can see very easy to use possible to tweak directly in game and uh, test it right away so very very cool i hope you're going to like it thank you for watching see you in the next video and let me know what you think of it in the comment and on discord bye